Arctic has come up with a ton of different coolers over the years, some a bit more extravagant and others rather simple. And that's precisely the topic of today. Simple. You see, Arctic's quite recent decision to streamline basically everything they create, I think I found where the design decision came from. Meet the Arctic Freezer A13X, the adorable mini version of an A35. As you might have guessed, because uh, I said A, 13x, A as an A, shameful decision to annoy reviewers by only including a single mounting kit. The 13x series comes in a separate Intel i13x and AMD A13x edition. Naturally, as our benchmarks require us to use it on top of a 3900x, we went with the a A13. Although that's a debatable decision between the whole environmental end and a consumer-friendly standpoint, I do want to point out that you can get a i13 LGA1700 mounting kit for like five bucks. Because, you know, it's like the exact same cooler with a different kit, so you, you could, you know, go for the LGA one and then tune this one to LGA1700 exclusively. However, I do believe that Arctic could do a bit more here, like AM4, LGA1200 mounting kits, whatever, and then just offer, offer them for like five bucks each, and the whole one cooler per platform issue becomes kind of a thing of the past. Anyway, the mounting hardware is not the only thing that was kept minimal inside the Arctic style box. Inside we'll find the A13X itself, accompanied by, you guessed, the smartphone shaped manual QR code. As we are already on the topic of minimal things, let's get to this mini fridge, the A13X. As my condescending voice might have already suggested, this thing is small, really small, measuring only 137.5 millimeters in height while being 112 millimeters wide and 85.5 millimeters thick, this thing is one of the smallest tower coolers I was able to find before falling into the small form factor category. The fan used on here strongly resembles a Arctic P static pressure focused blade design, while still being powered by a 4 pin PVM connection. Unfortunately for my own mental well-being, I believe that we found the source for this horrendous fan installation method that Arctic tries to push down everybody's throat. Just like the newer Arctic Freezer 35 model, this has the same old plastic thing that you push on top of your, of your heat sink and uh, it's, it's horrendous and I will never understand why not just go with, you know, fan clips because that would be so much cheaper, easier and more replaceable. Anyway, the fan isn't that standard though. Being exactly 100 by 100 millimeters, it is far from anything that you would usually see in the wild. Spinning at 2000 RPM, this interesting little fan is actually spinning slightly faster than a regular P12. However, this is also the end of my information. Except for the size and speed, there is really nothing that I know. To get the heat towards the fan, Arctic went with their usual direct touch copper heat pipe approach. This time we got three little heat pipes that are transporting everything up to 137 mm high and 44 fins block. However, just like literally every Arctic cooler before that, the base is rather small and could definitely get kind of an upgrade. On a short side note, instead of including them in the box, Arctic pre-applied some of their thermal paste directly on the base while it's protecting it with a piece of plastic. And that's fine, don't get me wrong, I uh, just need to specifically mention it because I needed to remove it before I actually did the b-roll. With everything out of the way, let's get to the installation method. As we are looking at the A13X today, I will only cover the AMD part, but believe me, installing an Arctic cooler is, is pretty much idiot proof. After removing the original AMD brackets, we can leave the backplate where it is and screw in the AMD standoff. From there, position the two mounting clips with the thread in the middle sticking out in the top and screw it down using the thumb screws. From there, break off your nails by removing the plastic of your cooler, position the heatsink on the CPU and screw it down on both sides. From there, create another trauma whilst installing the whole plastic thing back on. Okay, with everything covered, let's finally get to the important part. Benchmark. While letting the 100mm big fan spin at its full 2000 RPM, the A13 managed to keep the 3900X at 61 degrees C. An excellent result. But before you question my sanity, there are several reasons why a cooler that scored 5th last place 
should be considered as good. But first, let's define some things here. The A13 is not good in a, in a general sense, like there are other coolers for that, but it is good for a specific use case. And that use case is small without creating limitation. Truth is, absolutely every cooler on this list is either bigger or in a C-shaped form, which will then create some sort of RAM restriction on, on the RAM clearance. And if you don't want any RAM issues at all, and from there you favor height, then there is actually no smaller cooler which performs better than the A13X. And it is still better than an AMD Roth Prism, which is like the requirement to be called like a purchasable cooler at all. But how does it look on the noise to performance side? Here we will find the same result. While the A13X clearly outperforms the Roth Prism and NH-L12S, it is a bit behind the Be Quiet Pure Rock 2. Again, a very, very specific use case, but still in that scenario with those two big ifs, the A13 is a good option. So let's draw some sort of conclusion here. Arctic's A13X series, may it be for Intel or AMD, is a very special type of cooler. It can hardly be seen on the benchmark chart, and no matter how you look at it, it will never compete with the big boys. But it comes with 100% RAM compatibility, and it is only 137mm high. And if you happen to be in a situation where you're looking at a max 140mm high cooler, and if you don't want to cripple your fancy RGB RAM, this is actually your best option, as weird as it sounds. But I'm not done. This thing uh, can be bought for a whopping 17 euros. So even if it's number five counting backwards, the price to performance ratio is, is kind of funny. And it's so weird to praise a cooler which did not even make it above the lower quarter, but looking at it realistically, like this cooler is built to not be used on, on something above a 5600X. Like that's the hard limit and I think that's even too high. But if you take a look at AMD's list of Ryzen CPUs, Ryzen 5000s, everything until the 5600X including is being sold with an AMD Roth Prism, a cooler which did not manage to finish the benchmark at all. So yes, in theory, the A13 is a good cooler in case you, you have a sub 140 millimeter clearance and you don't want to skip on the nice looking RGB RAM. If all of those restrictions apply and you don't want to spend more than 20 bucks, the A13 is your friend. But in, if your case isn't built for Raspberry Pis, there, is a, there are a lot of coolers for just a couple of pennies more that can do a hell lot more. The A35 would be the perfect example. Considering that you can fit a 158mm high cooler, just 9 euros will bring you from here to here. So choose very wisely on that one. Anyway, this should be it for the weird mini version of an A35. At this point, a big thank you to Arctic for providing us this uh, Raspberry Pi cooler. And uh, if you want to con continue watching, have a look at our take on the A35. On a side note, we now also have a Discord server. So if you want to join and discuss which of my strokes is responsible for my pronunciation of the word PVM, that's a good place to start. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.